Hello YouTube, this is Sam Gerrans from quarternight.com. Today is Friday 23rd of October 2015 and today I want to talk about haram in the Quran. First, what is haram? Haram means forbidden or unlawful, made unlawful. And in this video I will outline what things the Qur'an forbids those who follow it and identify the only right which is incumbent upon such believers. The idea of what is haram or forbidden is a central topic among those who follow the hadith literature. There's no end to what you cannot do. From keeping dogs to men wearing silk or yellow or gold, if you can name it you can probably find someone to tell you that it's forbidden or haram. For those of us who are interested in what the Qur'an says, rather than adopting hearsay written down by representatives of the defeated Persians, a nation which had good reason to want to see the end of the Qur'anic movement some hundred or two hundred years after the Qur'an was revealed, for such people the arbiter of what is haram is the Qur'an. So I'm going to look at what the Qur'an says about what is haram. The following verses come from my own translation, the Qur'an, A Complete Revelation, which you can download by using the button in the top right-hand corner. Listed are all the verses which speak directly of what God has made haram and of man's rights and responsibilities in that regard, or rather um, the believer's rights and responsibilities in that regard. Following them, I have included the only verse in the Quran which talks of a particular rite, as, as in ritual, since traditionalist Muslims have adopted syncretically ideas about the killing of animals which came from the Jewish Bible and Talmud, and have conflated those ideas with some part of what we mean when we talk about haram or halal. I will simply read the verses and stop to comment on an ad hoc basis if I feel I have something I want to add. The first subject is food. He has but made unlawful to you carrion, and blood, and the flesh of swine, and what has been dedicated to other than God. And whoso is forced, neither desiring nor transgressing, no falsehood is against him. God is forgiving, merciful. Those who conceal what God has sent down in the law, and sell it for a cheap price, these eat into their bellies only fire. That's 2173 to 174. Next is on the subject of usury. God has made commerce lawful and prohibited usury. That's 2275. The next subject where haram is mentioned is in marriage relations. Forbidden to you are your mothers and your daughters and your sisters and your parental aunts and your maternal aunts and the daughters of a brother and the daughters of a sister and your milk mothers and your milk sisters and the mothers of your wives and your stepdaughters under your protection from your wives unto whom you have gone in and if you have gone not in unto them, then there is no wrong upon you. And the wives of your sons of your loins, and that you bring two sisters together, save what is past, God is forgiving, merciful. And married women, save that your right hands possess. The law of God is over you, but lawful to you is what is beyond that, if you seek with your wealth, in chastity, not being fornicators. And the next one regards hunting. Now, the reason why this is translated by me in this particular way is a subject which is greater than I can deal with now. And it pertains to Surah 5, verse 1. And if you want to know why I have translated the word here, forbidden, as forbidden, you will need to refer to the notes in the, the book itself. Made lawful for you is four-footed cattle, save what is recited to you, hunting not being permitted 
when you are forbidden, God ordains what he wishes. That seems quite clear to me. The next again treats of food. Um, it rather fleshes out uh, some of the points that have already been made. Quote, Forbidden to you is carrion and blood and the flesh of swine and that dedicated to other than God and the dead by strangling and the dead by beating and the dead by falling and the dead by goring and that eaten by the beast of prey save what you slaughter and that sacrificed upon an altar and that you seek appointment by divining arrows that is wanton perfidy this day have those who are indifferent to warning despaired of your doctrine fear them not but fear me this day have i perfected for you your doctrine and completed my favour upon you and approved for you submission as doctrine but whoso is compelled by hunger without inclination to falsehood god is forgiving merciful that was five three to four it's my own opinion that the reason why uh, those who are indifferent to warning have despaired of your doctrine is because there is no religion in it there's nothing for them to get their hands on people who have faith in god we actually don't need a religion because you have god religion is an idol 572 this treats of uh, ascribing partnership to god quote whoso ascribes a partnership to god to him has god forbidden the garden and his habitation is the fire now many muslims attempt to make of these sorts of statements in the quran something akin to what the christians or certain christians claim for uh, blaspheming the Holy Ghost. It's a, an unpardonable sin. I've never really understood what the Christians mean by blaspheming the Holy Ghost, but I do know what ascribing a partnership to God means. Now, this is not an equivalent because you can repent of this in your life. If people who had ascribed a partnership to God at some point in their life were damned to hell forever, there would be no point in witnessing to them and the Quran certainly calls us to witness to people this is what Muslims are supposed to be doing not uh, spreading a, an invented religion which they call Islam so God can forgive these things it's if you die in that state that you are damned the next point is making haram things which God has not made haram this itself is haram now this should be quite instructive for those uh, traditionalists for whom, they, well, frankly, their stock in trade is making things haram, which God has not made haram. Uh, it's how they operate as a business. And this is 587. Quote, O you who heed warning, forbid not the good things that God has made lawful for you, and transgress not. God loves not the transgressors. I mean, this seems fairly clear to me. The next concerns hunting. Again, it really echoes what we had at 5.1. And this is 5.98. O you who heed warning, kill no game when you are forbidden. That seems quite clear to me. You've been told not to kill game. Don't do it. I fail to see what's complicated about this kind of instruction, unless, of course, you have a religion to support. The next concerns eating. And it's 6.119. And why should you not eat of that over which the name of God has been remembered, when he has set out and detailed to you what is forbidden, save that you be compelled thereto? That's uh, quite straightforward. What's preventing us from, from remembering the name of God over the food that we eat? It's not difficult. The next is particularly telling. It's the example of those who make up religions. And uh, it's at 6, 138 to 140. Quote, and they say, These cattle and tilth are taboo, none is to eat of them save whom we will, according to their claim, and cattle whose backs are unlawful, and cattle over which they remember not the name of God, as an invention against him. He will requite them for what they have invented. And they say, That which is in the bellies of such cattle is exclusively for our males and forbidden our wives. 
and if it be dead, they are all partners therein. He will requite them for their description. He is wise, knowing. They have lost who foolishly kill their children without knowledge and make unlawful what God provided them as an invention about God. They have gone astray and are not rightly guided. This was 6, 138 to 140. Quite frankly, I struggle to find a better description of what it is the traditionalist does for a living. I mean, everything is haram. This is haram. I mean, I, I'm not making this up. If you're not from an Islamic background, just go on to any, any Islamic site and just read. It's depressing. It's comical. It's largely ludicrous. But it's not in the Quran. Uh, you know, uh, can you make wudu with um, when your fingernails are painted? I mean, it's just ludicrous. And this is what this section is talking about. The kind of people who make this rubbish up. Now, it's very clear. He will requite them for what they invented. He will requite them for their description. He is wise, knowing. And they have gone astray and are not rightly guided. I, I'm not making this up. I'm just re reading the Quranic verses to you. So the Quranic position is what? Well, we find this at 6145 and uh, later at um, 6150, 153. So I shall read these verses. Quote, Say thou, I find not in what I am instructed anything made unlawful to one who would eat it, save it to be carrion, or blood poured forth, or the flesh of swine. It is abomination, or a wanton perfidy dedicated to other than God. And whoso is forced, neither desiring nor transgressing, then thy Lord is forgiving, merciful. So if somebody sticks a gun to your head, or even if you're starving hungry, and you have no choice but to eat an unclean food, or to you know, you're pushed into a situation where you just simply have no choice, then thy Lord is forgiving, merciful. This is not a legalistic construct. It's for our good, but it gives us a way of observing the things which God has required of us. So again, the Quranic position. This is 6, 150 through 153. Say thou, Bring your witnesses who bear witness that God made this unlawful. Then, if they bear witness, then do not thou bear witness with them. And follow thou not the vain desires of those who repudiate our proofs, and those who believe not in the hereafter, and ascribe equals to their Lord. Say thou, come, I will recite to you what your Lord has made unlawful for you that you ascribe a partnership with him to anything, while towards parents good conduct, and kill not your children out of poverty, we will provide for you and for them, and approach not the sexual immoralities, whether open or concealed, and kill not the soul which God has made unlawful, save a right, that he enjoined upon you, that you might use reason, and approach not the property of the fatherless, save with what is better, until he reach his maturity, and fulfil the measure and the balance with equity. We task not any soul save to its capacity, and when you speak be just, though he be a relative, and the pledge of God fulfil, that he commanded you that you might take heed. This is my straight path so follow it, and follow not other ways, for then will you be parted from his way. That he commanded you, that you might be in prudent fear. That's 6, 150 through 153. I read on further than treated specifically of haram, because the these verses, two verses, they three verses, they go together. There is no way of splitting them without doing an injustice to the text. Next, good things are not haram. 
and this is found at 732 to 33. Say thou, who has made unlawful the adornment of God which he brought forth for his servants and the good things of provision? Say thou, these are for those who heed warning in the life of this world exclusively on the day of resurrection. Thus do we set out and detail the proofs for people who know. Say thou, my Lord has made unlawful the sexual immoralities, whether opened or concealed, and falsehood, and sectarian zealotry without cause, and that you ascribe a partnership to God for that which he has not sent down a warrant, and that you ascribe to God what you know not. That's 732 to 33. Making things up about God is, according to the Quran, haram. And yet we see that the, the religionists, in the name of this fictitious religion, it seems to be fundamentally their main occupation. Anyway, we leave them to what their reward will be. What God will make haram in the hereafter? We find this identified at 750 to 51. Quote, And the companions of the fire will call to the companions of the garden, Pour forth upon us some water, or some of what God has provided for you. They will say, God has made both unlawful to those who spurned guidance while claiming virtue, who took their doctrine as play and diversion, and whom the life of this world deceived. So this day do we forget them, even as they forgot the meeting of this their day, and as they rejected our proofs. That's 750, 51. The next point is about changing lunar months. Now the traditionalist will have it that it's about particular months in which fighting is not allowed and that he of course knows what these months are. Um, these months are not mentioned in the Quran. What the Quran certainly requires is that we follow a lunar calendar and this is at 937. Postponement is but an increase in denial whereby those who are indifferent to warning are led astray. They make it lawful one year and make it unlawful another year, that the number might agree with what God made unlawful. They make lawful what God made unlawful. Made fair to them is the evil of their deeds, and God guides not the people who spurn guidance while claiming virtue. Now the very archetype that this is talking about are the Jews who manipulate the instructions that they were given in the Torah in order to seem to obey those instructions whilst actually following something else. And this is the lesson here. We quite clearly in the Quran are told to follow the lunar calendar. To give them the, the credit, it's one of the th actually few things that the Islamic world has managed to get right and keep right. The Quran, according to my reading, and not only my reading, I can justify this very specifically, we're meant to fast every month, something of every month. And when one does fast every month, and when you give charity every month, and when you have a, a concept of a monthly cycle, you begin to have a, a different conception of time, and it's it gives you an idea, it gives you a sense of your mortality. You become aware that your life has a beginning and a middle and an end. You don't know where the end's going to come, and therefore you don't know where the middle was. But you can see it going from stage to stage to stage, and the moon bears witness to that. Now, it's a real shame because that moderns have lost a sense of what the moon is telling them. We are meant to observe a lunar cycle, and that's what this is about. And I refer you to the notes in in my book, the the Quran, a complete revelation, and you'll find the relevant notes in that section of the Quran around the area of 937. The next point is about food and lying about God. Quote. He has but made unlawful to you carrion, and blood, and the flesh of swine, and that dedicated to other than God. 
But whoso is forced, neither desiring nor transgressing, God is forgiving, merciful. And add not to what your tongues describe the lie, this is lawful and this is unlawful, to invent lies about God. Those who invent lies about God will not succeed, a brief enjoyment, and they have a painful punishment. That's 16, 116 through 117. It's self-explanatory. The next point. Cities destroyed by God. This is at 21, 95 through 96. Quote, And made unlawful is any city we have destroyed. They will not return until when Yajuj and Matjuj are unloosed. Now, the traditionalist Muslim, well, I'm certain, I don't exactly know what they are, but I've read enough of his stuff to have a fairly good sense of his um, dominant interests. And there will be some stories about Yatjuj and Matjuj and, you know, some sort of eschatological construction about them appearing and then this is the end of the world. This is because he hasn't read the Quran with his brain engaged. And, and if you read Surah 18, this is all explained and it's, it's actually much simpler. So it just, it just means at the end of the world. That's all it is. The next section, are, which treats of uh, haram, is those unrepentant and guilty of unlawful sexual intercourse. These people may not marry believers. And it's at 24.3 and says, The man guilty of unlawful sexual intercourse shall not marry save a woman guilty of unlawful sexual intercourse or an idolatrous. And a woman guilty of unlawful sexual intercourse shall not marry save a man guilty of unlawful sexual intercourse or an idolater, and that is unlawful to the believers. Now, if you read the, the translation and the notes, it's quite clear from the context that there is a, um, a proviso for people who truly repent, and I refer interested people to read that. Next, and it's at 66.1. And in it, the Prophet himself is told not to engage in making haram what is lawful. Quote, O Prophet, why makest thou unlawful that which God has made lawful for thee, seeking to please thy wives? And God is forgiving, merciful. So, in his life, we can see, reading between the lines, and we don't need to read between them very far, that there was an instance in which the Prophet himself had made something unlawful. And he is chided. This is the Prophet of God, is chided for doing that. Now, are we to believe that he made a common practice, which is frankly what... Well, to some extent, anyway, uh, what is touted about as his so-called sunnah, um, you know, this is the making of things unlawful, which God has not specified as unlawful, or stating that they must be done or to some extent, whether it be, you know, it's desirable or not desirable or more desirable than other things on a Tuesday or Friday, whatever it is. I don't believe that. And if you choose to believe it, you really are having to do so in in opposition to what the Quran quite clearly states. So, since the concept of haram and halal is so tied up with food, um, I just want to have a quick look at where in the Quran we can find anything on this subject. And we find that the only case in the Quran of a, an explicit right concerning uh, livestock for food is at 22.34. And the only real directive that we have is that we should remember the name of God over it. It's quite stunningly simple. So to close, I am going to re recite the only, or quote, the only instance in the Quran where we have a clear rite or ritual given to humanity. It wasn't actually only given to the quote-unquote Muslims. It says it was given to every community. And it's at 2234. Quote, And for every community we appointed a right. 
that they remember the name of God over that he has given them of livestock cattle for food. And your God is one God. So submit to him and bear thou glad tidings to the humble. That's it. It's not complicated. That's all for now. If you're listening on YouTube, you can download my full translation of the Quran free using the button in the top right hand corner. I also encourage you to sign up for the Quranite Plus newsletter on the site to get occasional micro updates. Like if you like, comment if you have something to say and subscribe to get more each week and use the button below to donate if you want to help me keep doing this. And remember, life is short. Eternity is long. If you want good trees, plant good seeds.